Hey everybody and welcome back to another Dark Vault tutorial. So today we're going to be doing another VFX uh, sci-fi eyes type thing, as you can see in the example here. So we've done this before in 2.7, but since 2.8 is now coming out, I thought I'd uh, create this in 2.8. And But just keep in mind that it is still in beta. So uh, there are still problems and missing features and things like that. So keep that in mind. And again, we will encounter some of these things uh, in a few minutes. But yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get started. The beta is updated daily. So your version might be more updated than mine. But the first thing we want to do is use the new presets or the new workstations. You can do that from here on the splash screen. You can just go to any one of these. Let's go ahead and choose VFX. By the way, you can do the same thing by going to File, New, and then choosing VFX. But if you want, you can go ahead and lay this out any way you want. Now I don't need the dope sheet, so I'm just gonna right click here, join area. We're gonna keep this 3D view, and we can now go ahead and load in our movie clips. Um, it used to be down here where you'd open the movie clip, it's now up here. If you want, you can right click, and then just choose flip to the bottom, and then it's down here again. But I'm gonna embrace the new blender, and I'm gonna right click, flip to the top, and just keep it at the top. Uh, why not? So let's go ahead and open up a movie clip. So I'm gonna use this video clip we used in a previous tutorial. Uh, the first thing we need to do is set the scene frames. So right now we're, we have 250 frames, but this movie clip is less. So let's go ahead and set the scene frames. There we go. Then the next thing we need to do is prefetch. And like in 2.79, this should fill up all the way. Up here in edit, go down to preferences, and then you just want to go down here to system, the sequencer cache limit, or cache limit, however you want to call it. Uh, you just want to increase this. I mean, you can go to the maximum, or you can just increase it enough just to um, cache, just to cache your clip. So once you've increased that, let's go ahead and click save preferences. We don't need to worry about that again. Go ahead and close that. Now you can prefetch and it'll fill up all the way. So this, this clip's too long. I'm gonna start this at maybe frame 60, something like that. We have a blink and then, so I'm gonna start it at frame 60. We need to create a couple of tracking markers, uh, a couple of masks, and then maybe some other little things we can come back and do. Let's first go ahead and uh, track this. Just go down here. Location is fine. I'm going to choose previous frame. I'm also going to check normalize. And then what we could do over here, we have these little tabs. We don't need to worry about the footage since these are the footage settings. We're okay with these. Let's go to track. Then when we add a track, let's hold control and left click. We have this tiny little tracking marker down here. So I'm going to press S and scale this up. And we can see a preview here. Now there's one thing that I used to do all the time um, and that was activate this search size. Now for the life of me, I cannot find where the search size is. If we go down to marker, we can see here it says the position of the marker, the offset of the marker, the pattern area and the search area. I've played around with these and there's, there's no way for it to show the search size. And I've looked all around. So if anybody's found <laughs> how to show the search size in this view, Please, please, please let me know in the comments because I have no idea where it is. <laughs> okay, so we can't see the search size, not too bad. Um, let's just grab this and move it, scale it down a bit. Now we would, now normally I would track the eye or the pupil since it doesn't, it normally does a good job, but since we're gonna blink, it's gonna get rid of it. So what I could do is I could track through the areas that are clean. So all these areas here I could use, then manually move it and then track it again or find another area on the face that moves in the same direction as the eye, but isn't affected by the blink. Grab this and move it down. I'm also gonna scale it up. Now let's track this forward and see if it works. Now what you can do, if we go down here, open this section up and then do the tracking. But we also have these new buttons here, which we could do anyway. So let's use these. This arrow tracks forward. This arrow, if it was here, we could track backwards. This would track in uh, steps. This one would clear the frames and this one would refine. So the same tools that we have here, they just now have um, icons here as well. So again, it's up to you how you do this. I'm just gonna track these forward. 
we can see we have down here our graph editor which is very useful especially when you've got multiple tracks especially in a 3d scene in this example it can help show you if your tracking markers are out of place or jumping in a certain area but we're not really going to go into that today so i want to play through this now and make sure this doesn't move or slide now we have this what i'm going to do is press t I'm going to go down here where it says copy from active track just so we get the same size. Now I'm going to hold control and left click, do the same for this side. So I need to jump to the first frame. So let's go ahead and track this forward. And the bigger these are, the longer it will take to track, so keep that in mind as well. There we go. We could name these if we want. So this one can be the left one, and this one can be the right. So we'll use these in a moment. Uh, what we could do, we could go down here to where it says tracking and change this to the masking mode, which just does this. But I'm gonna change this back to tracking and then bring this down. But we're gonna use this section later on. So we're gonna switch over to this uh, masking workstation or workspace. Now we have this. Again, we have some new windows that we can use if we want. I don't need them. So I'm gonna right click, join area. Then I'm also gonna do the same for this here right click join area now we can go over here click this movie clip icon and then click the movie clip that we've been working with we can see that we have the tracking markers and we can use them and still move around things and and again we can always go up here and change it back to the tracking if we need to but changing to the masking workspace gives us a whole new area to work with just dedicated to masking which i kind of like it's nice anyway so let's go ahead and add these masks for the eyes and again it's pretty simple um, normally it would be down here you'd, you'd just click new and then rename the mask and then start creating your mask instead it's just up here um, I'm going to click new let's call this eyes and we can go ahead and start clicking away so when it comes to eyes I like to create four points so control left click now if we hold alt and then press C just close this now if we try and create another eye over here let's see what happens <laughs> so now we get this, uh, it extends our mask on this section. So let's go ahead and press Control Z and undo that. Now what we can do is just utilize the layers in this mask. So, so over in this section here, we can just change this to the masking tab. And just like before, we have this layers section. Um, so right now, this is our first layer within this mask. We can go ahead and name this. And you also see that we have some icons here. And these represent the visibility or renderability. We can, can turn on and off these. So if we click this one, we restrict the visibility in the viewport. If we click this one, we'll no longer be able to move things around. And then if we click this one, we'll no longer be able to render it in the final. So again, we had these before, but now the, the icons kind of represent what they do. So for this, let's go ahead and restrict the selection so we can't select it. Now let's add a new layer and rename the layer. Now we can go ahead and add this new layer here. So control left click, press Alt C, and there we go. So now, now we have these crazy looking diamond masks, which are not very helpful right now. Let's go back over here to the mask layers and uncheck this. So we want, so now we can select it. Let's press A and select both of these. Let's press V and then we want to choose automatic. Now they kind of look even stranger, but need to go ahead and change these points and match the curve of the eye. So I've done tutorials on masking before. If you want to check that out, I've got a link up here and you can check that out. So one tool that you might find useful, if right now you try and press, if you press S, try and scale things, it doesn't really work. If we go over to the top here, just like in 3D view, we get this pivot point selection. So right now it's using individual origins. We want to change this to bounding box center. So now when I select this, we can S and scale, or we can press R to rotate. And this just makes it a little bit easier to get the general shape before you start going in and changing these points around. So many of you are probably already comfortable with making masks. Um, and again, if you're not, go ahead and check out that video. But I'm gonna go ahead and speed through this um, so you guys don't have to wait around. So that didn't really take too long. Um, now what we need to do is parent these to the trackers. So let's go ahead and select this tracking marker here. 
then press B to use the box select tool. I'm going to left click and select these here. Then, now I'm going to hold control and then press P. Now we've parented this to this tracking marker. Now I have a right click on this one. Do the same thing, press B. Select these, hold control, press P. And then, and then now if we play through the timeline, we can see that they stick to the face, which is good. One of the problems you will find is the blink. So it's all good up until the blink. So we need to go ahead and uh, fix that. It's pretty simple to do. If we just jump to the first frame, and then we just need to kind of find where the blink starts. So I'm going to press the right arrow key on my keyboard, just jump ahead of frame. I'm going to keep doing that until we first see the blink. So this is the first frame that it starts to blink, which is 71. If I go back a frame, so keep going back until like there, this is a good frame. So it starts to squint here. So on this frame, this, the eyes have not started to blink yet. So we can use this. Let's go down here to this um, record button. And what this does is any change that we make, it will automatically add a keyframe and uh, change it for us, which is very, very handy. So, so let's go ahead and press A to select both of these. I'm going to press G. So without moving the mouse, I'm going to hit enter. So what this does is add uh, our first keyframe. Now what I'm going to do is jump ahead and find where the blink stops. So here, I'm happy with this frame here. So make sure all of them are still selected. Press G and then hit enter. So now we can go backwards and actually animate this blink. So I'm going to start here. I'm just going to bring these in a bit. I'm going to press A to select all of them, press G, hit enter. So now I'm just going to jump forward again and then start moving these points. I'm kind of lucky on this one, the blink is very fast. If you've got a slow blink, you probably just try and match the edge. Keep going frame by frame and matching the edge. And so I guess the more frames you've got, the longer it'll take. That could be a bit of a pain, that's a weird blink. <laughs> I'm going to jump ahead. So now the eyes are closed. So what I could do is press A and press G, move them out of the way. But we're going to add some motion blur and I found that the, it sometimes has problems. It'll leave like a streak of blur on the screen. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to animate the, uh, the render visibility as we talked about before. So let me go backwards one frame. And then if I go over here to the mask layers, press I to add a keyframe now has this yellow highlight. Same thing for this one. Now when I jump forward, I'm going to uncheck this and also uncheck this. Now I just realized I added a keyframe when I don't really need to since we have the automatic keyframes checked. So if I go backwards, then forwards, and then keep going forward until we see the eyes opening, which is here. Then we can turn them back on. So now we have this. We can see the eyes. We can see the camera's got this white color. Now we can see that it's been turned off. And they're still turned off until here, they turn back on. So it's a quick way of turning your masks off and turning them back on without moving them out of place. And now again, we can position the eyelids. There we go. So it didn't really take too long. Um, Again, the more blinks you have, the more masking I guess you've got to do. So now we can move on, but instead of going forward, we just need to go back to motion tracking. Let's go ahead and set up our camera. So whilst hovered over here, let's press number pad one, just to jump to the front view. Now I'm gonna hold control, alt, and then press number pad zero. This will just align the camera to the front view. Now I'm just gonna select the camera, press G, just move this into the center. So now we have this, let's go ahead and um, add these tracking markers. You want to select both of these, so let's press A. And let's go to Reconstruction. Then all the way down here, we want to link empty to track. It does this. Now you want to play through this and make sure both of these tracks move. Sometimes I found when I tried this, a couple of times I tried this and they didn't move. What I needed to do is just jump ahead and then press Control Z. Then the tracking markers seem to jump into position and then they started to move around so if your tracking markers don't move just jump to a random place on the timeline then press ctrl z and then it should fix that and again it is in beta so maybe when you download the the beta version it may have been fixed 
So again, let me know in the comments if this still happens or if it's been changed. Okay, so now we have this, um, we can close this section here. So right click, join area. Now what we need to do is add our uh, robot eye texture. So let's go ahead and shift A, go down here to image. If you don't have this section, you will need to go to edit, preferences, add-ons, and then you should type image. And then you can go ahead and check import image as planes, save your preferences, and then you could now go ahead and do that. So shift A, image, we have reference image, background image, and images as planes, which is the one we want. Now for this, before we do anything, I want to make sure that we use the correct settings. So I want to use shadeless. We also want to make sure that the alpha is checked. And now we can go ahead and load in our image. So now the image has been added, we don't see anything. So let's go ahead and change the shading. So up here, we need to find the shading section. So right now we can see it's in solid view. Let's go ahead and change this to rendered view. So this is the image that we're gonna use. Uh, we do need to change a few things um, before we can actually use it. So if you guys wanna use this image too, um, I'll throw a link in the description. So you can use this for whatever you want. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and fix this alpha transparency issue here. So with this plane selected, Let's go down to the material tab. Then if you scroll all the way down here to where it says settings, we want to change this blend mode to alpha blend. And then we can change the transparency shadow to opaque. So now we have this, we can move on. So now we need to position these where the eyes would be. Um, in previous versions, we'd press N, we'd go down here to where it says like backdrop. And we used to be able to add an image as a backdrop. But now we, we're not able to do that. We have to kind of uh, do it a different way. So what I need, first need to do, let me go over to compositing. Check use nodes. We have these two nodes here. Let me just scroll this down. It's far too big. Then I'm going to hold control, shift and left click. It'll add a viewer node. Let's go ahead and shift A. Go to color, mix. Shift A, input, movie clip. Let's plug this in as well. Now these are actually the wrong way around. We will need to change these around, but before we do anything, let's go ahead and load in the movie clip. If we select this movie clip icon, select the movie clip that we've been working with. So let's go ahead and press F12, see what we're working with. So now we have this, we just want to take this image and use it as a reference. So let's jump back to the first frame. Then press F12. We have this. We want to save this, so go to image, save as. So now we've saved this as a background image. And Oh, and by the way, I just want to change that. Let's go to render, display mode. Um, I don't like it popping up in a new window. I just want to change this to image editor. If you want to keep it as a new window, that's entirely up to you. This makes no difference to the uh, the outcome. <laughs> so now when we press F12 like this, it'll just change the window. Anyway, so let's go back. We have that background image. So now we can go back to the motion tracking workspace. Now if we shift A, go to image, background image, then we can select the background image. Just need to scale this up something like this so now one of the problems we'll have is we can't see the uh, <laughs> we can't see anything behind it um, even though that the eye texture is actually in front of it so it's a bit weird so what we can do if we select this background image then down here to object data so what we can do we can just reduce this transparency here just so we can see this now we can select this robot eye texture move this up scale it and put it in position. I kind of want to make it a little bit bigger than the original eye. Now I'm happy with that, so I'm going to press Shift D, move one over here. Looks good. Now I can get rid of this background image, right click this image, delete it. So now we can parent these to the empty tracks. So right click, hold Shift and then right click on this one. Then again, hold Control, press P. Now we can set either object or object keep transform. Do the same thing for this one, right click, shift, right click, control P, object keep transform, and there we go. 
let's go ahead and go back to the compositing so let's go ahead and render and see what we're working with now okay so one of the problems we can see that this background here is this kind of grayish almost blackish color so we need to um, add alpha transparency in this render tab here just go down to where it says film just like we did in previous versions now where it says alpha let's change this from sky to transparent so now when we press render f12 we get this which is what we should get <laughs> because as i mentioned before we need to just switch these around and now we get this now anytime that you've got something with alpha and you add it into a mix node you will need to check this box here which will let this node know that you're going to use it so now we have this let's switch these around like that let's go ahead let's go ahead and add in the mask that we created so shift a input mask select this mask icon and choose eyes plug this mask into the factor and there we go we've got this nice uh, transition here what we could do as well is if we shift a filter blur just drop this in here and then let's increase this so i'm going to left click here and drag down now i can select both of these at the same time let's try a value of 10 it's not too bad if we go too crazy let me show you yeah well that's not too bad either let's try something too crazy 90 we get this crazy blur amount so make sure you don't go overboard with this so that's one of the things done so i'm going to right click here just join this we don't need the dope sheet and then we've got this timeline here so again when we play through this um, everything should move we just need to keep re-rendering it for these eyes to move and then like sort of press f12 I mean, it only took two seconds to render, which is pretty good. You want to make sure the eyes um, are perfectly aligned, like that clearly isn't aligned. <laughs> so make sure you align it perfectly. So that looks okay. Now let's add a few more things. Um, I think the whites of the eyes would look better if it was brighter, especially because it's this kind of robot look. So let's kind of fake that. Shift A, go to color, RGB curves. Just drop this in here. And then if we plug this uh, eyes with the blur node, let's plug this into the factor. And let's see what happens if we drag this down. And we can see this is the area that's being affected, all of this area. What we want to do is only affect the white, part, the white parts of the eyes. So let's go ahead and create a custom mask to do that. So right now we have this. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to hold Control, Shift and left click. So we have this that's been blurred. What we want to do is add that circle just to block out that shape. So the good thing is we've got that shape already. If we see the render layers here, if we control shift and left click, it shows us the image. If we control shift left click again, it shows us the alpha. So we can use this alpha mask in combination with this eye mask to create an, a new custom mask for this for the white parts of the eyes so hopefully that kind of makes sense i'm not confusing things um so let's go ahead and do that i'm going to view this node shift a go to converter i'm going to add a math node so i'm going to drop this in here where it goes into the uh, rgb curves node and then i'm going to plug this into the viewer node now for this render layers i'm going to take the alpha feed and plug this into the bottom now we have this, we can see one on top of the other. So now we want to mix this in a way that works for us. So let's go ahead and choose subtract. Now we have this. So now this mask here is only going to affect the white parts of the eyes. So we took this mask and this and created this, which is very handy because now what we can do, if we see the white parts of the eyes, if we just start dragging this up, it'll only affect the white parts of the eyes. Now, normally with the white parts of the eyes, you wouldn't go this crazy, but since it's a robot, I think something this white would work. Uh, it looks like I need to fix the mask a little bit on the eye, but other than that, I think it looks good. Another thing I want to add is a shadow just to kind of blend this in and make it look nicer. Maybe color correct the background video and then tie it all off with some color grading. So let's go ahead and add the shadow now. And and I'm going to go pretty quick with this, so hopefully you guys, uh, so hopefully you guys will stick around. Then we'll go back to masking. Let's add a new mask. 
is going to be called shadows. And then for this, let's go ahead and control left click. Now, once you're happy with the shape, let's press A, select all of these. I'm going to press V and then choose automatic. And then we could go ahead and fix any of these areas that you need to. But again, we can always come back and refine these anytime we want. I'm not too worried about this top area since it won't be seen. I'm just focused on this kind of edge here. As long as I'm happy with this edge, I can move on. But before we do that, we need to parent these to these trackers like we did with the other mask. So, so select this tracking marker here. I'm going to press B. Select all of these. Control, press P. This one's been parented. Right click on this. Press B. Control P. So now they both move. Now one of the things you might want to do as well, when you blink, you kind of want to move these down as well, this shadow, so animate this. When the top eyelid moves down, the shadow sort of comes down with it. And if there's no shadow on this um, robot eye texture, it will kind of look weird. So make sure you um, animate this and move it down. So I'm going to come back and do that. I don't, again, I don't want to waste your time. So keep that in mind. Let's go back um, with this shadow. What I'm going to do pretty simple shift a go to color mix. Just drop this in shift a input mask. Let's choose the shadow mask. Plug this into the factor. And then we get this, which looks like um, I don't know what it looks like. It looks crazy. <laughs> If anybody's watched Rick and Morty, it kind of looks like um, eye flaps. <laughs> Anyone seen that? Anyway, so moving on, let's go ahead and shift D, duplicate this. And then I'm going to take from this RGB curves and plug this in here like this. And then let's go ahead and take this mask over here with the blur and plug this in as the factor. Then we get this. So let's go ahead and... So now we've, so when we flip these round, we get this shadow on the inside, which is what we want. Go ahead and soften that up. So this shadow here for shift A, go to filter, blur. Oh, by the way, what I'll do is I'll take some screenshots of these nodes and um, I'll upload it to the blog. So if you guys want to check that out, I'll throw a link in the description. Let's go ahead and blur this. I'm going to give this a heavy amount, maybe 40. It's pretty good. That's not too bad. So now it's still a bit too dark, so shift A. I'm going to go to converter, add in a color ramp. Just drop this in right after the blur. Now for this, I'm going to select the white handle. Now I can click this. Now when we drag this down, the shadow is going to get brighter. So just watch as we start dragging this down. So you want to kind of play around with this and get something that works for you. So I'll plug this into the viewer node. This was before the shadow. This is after the shadow. So I think adding the shadow definitely helps. And when you add that blink, make sure you add that shadow, make sure the shadow follows and goes down just to kind of tie it all in. Now we have this, as I mentioned before, we kind of want to fade these eyes into the background. So, so right now this is being mixed with the background here. What I want to do is on this string here, I just want to kind of add in um, another bit of mass. So, I mean, it's all getting crazy with these nodes, but hopefully this is all making sense. Uh, let's, let's see what this node is. We have this. Much like we created a custom mask here, we also want to do the same thing, but for this one. So let's go ahead and do that. Shift A, go to Converter. Again, add a math node. These math nodes are amazing for masks. And then let's go ahead and plug this alpha into the bottom. Hold control shift left click. Let's preview this. So now the way we want this to work, we want the whites to be bold. Let's try multiply. So now we have this. So we went from this to this. Let's see what happens to our original image. So that's okay. Let's just mute this and see what we had before. There's not really much difference, which is good. That's what we want. Now what we need to do between this node here, go shift A, filter dilate erode node plug this in right here and then for this let's change this to feather and then let's reduce this let's reduce this a crazy amount let's try 70 
actually we need to go in the minus so let's try minus seven zero so we can see it's reduced it all the way in that's far too much and maybe even like minus 20 would be good for this example or maybe let's try 25 so let's mute this that was, that was before that was after as you can see it brings back some of that original eye which i kind of like so if you like that keep it if you don't <laughs> get rid of it it's up to you so now we can add some glows some other compositing things um, maybe a glare node it's entirely up to you when you're happy with this and you want to render this out um, instead of going to rendering like this is the render slots and things which is okay but instead of going to rendering i'm just going to do that in the compositing let's go here to the um, the output section make sure you're happy with the resolution settings make sure this is at 100 then go down here to output and we want to make sure we know where we save this to then if we go down to where it says file format let's change this from png to an ffmpeg video then down to encoding and then choose um, a format that works for you for me i'm going to select this icon here this presets icon and choose h.264 in mp4 format so now it's changed so again once you've added your color grading and things um, go ahead and uh, render this out so over here to render so if you want you can go over here to render animation or you can use the shortcut which is Control f12 and then go ahead and render this out so hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial if you did be sure to give it a like as always thanks for watching and i'll uh, see you next time